Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a, a numeric expression, okay? We have all kinds of lovely stuff going on. Of course, we have uh, fractions, which we are already excited about dealing with. We're like, oh, fractions, this is gonna be awesome. But then we have uh, division, uh, multiplication, addition, and you know we're gonna have to figure out what do we do with this problem? Well, uh, you'd be surprised, uh, you know, even though we're not doing algebra here, in my experience as a math teacher, if I just gave this to, let's say, a pop quiz to a pre-algebra um, course or my class or an Algebra 1 class, maybe even beyond that, eh, maybe like, you know, 25% would get it right the first time because they make this one specific, uh, there's a misunderstanding out there that a lot of students um, forget about, a little detail that we need to know to be successful in doing this problem. Now, of course, to do this problem, you already need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions at a minimum. But what else are we dealing with here? Okay, well, I have mathematical operations. I have division, multiplication, addition, and then this little fraction bar down here is also division. So when you have all these different mathematical operations, again, in math, these are called operations. Um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then there's powers and everything else. So what is that thing that helps us uh, in mathematics figure out what order we're supposed to do this problem in? Because if I do this in different uh, different order, okay, if I choose to do uh, uh, addition first and then division, and if I just kind of randomly just kind of do this, uh, guess what? I'm going to come up with all kinds of crazy answers. So what is the rule? You know, what is the procedure, the exact procedure we're supposed to take here? Well, we have to use that thing called PEMDAS, all right? Remember that? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And this is what uh, basically the little mnemonic phrase that helps us remember the order of operations. Okay, so this particular phrase right here is what students think they know like really, really well. And most students know it pretty well, but they can uh, get confused with one little area here that uh, will really mess you up in this particular problem. Okay, so I want to really, you know, make sure you don't make that same mistake. Now, of course, if you think you can do this problem all on your own, pause the video, knock out your solution. It might take you about eh, a minute, minute or two, but I'm going to get into the precise uh, way we need to do this problem, and I'm going to highlight this common misunderstanding so you don't make uh, any er uh, errors with the order of operations. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, uh, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and finally, I just launched pre-calculus. So that's uh, really exciting. So if you are at that level of math, you can now uh, check out my pre-calculus course. Really, really cool stuff. Anyways, um, but beyond that, I have many courses in the area of test preparation. So those would include uh, like GED, SAT, um, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, ALEX exam, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. So if you're taking any one of those particular exams, they all have math on them. Okay, so someone out there thinks math is pretty important. But uh, if you don't do well on the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So I can help you prepare. Just go to my website and check out my full course catalog. By the way, if I don't have your exam, drop me online and I'll help you out the best I can anyways. Now, I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to uh, be great at math, then you got to be serious about taking great math notes. That's the bottom line. Um, I've been teaching math for decades, and the one thing I can point to with consistency is those students who take great math notes almost always end up doing very well. It's kind of common sense. And then those students who were like me way back in the good old 1980s, and what was I doing? Well, I was taking notes, but they had nothing to do with math during math courses. I was like writing back and forth to my friends saying, hey, what are we doing this weekend? We didn't have any cell phones back in those days that we can text. If I had a cell phone, okay, back in those days, I don't even think I'd be making this video because I likely wouldn't have graduated. That thing is completely, uh, well, first of all, cell phones are awesome, smartphones are awesome, but they're completely distracting. You gotta learn how to put that thing away and focus. If you can't focus, you're not gonna be successful in anything you do, all right? So really, really focus in on your notes and um, that will help you stay 
uh, focused and keeping your attention on what your teacher's uh, telling you. All right. Now, in the meantime, as you're improving in your notes, you can use mine to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and erase all this stuff so you can get a better view of this problem if you want to give it a whirl. Okay, so what do you think? You think you're going to get this right? Okay, are you going to be part of that 25%? Now, I don't know these exact percentages, but, you know, a good majority of these people, uh, or students, okay, rather, uh, would probably give me a wrong answer. And I'm not even throwing in, like, negative numbers and all this other good stuff. I can make this thing much more complicated, but I'm just talking about this. All right, now, the one thing you don't want to do, all right, just to be clear, is you never, ever turn these guys into decimals and work in decimals. Don't do that. Don't use your calculator. Just, you know, good old-fashioned paper and pencil. All right, so let's get into it. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the error first. So we're talking about PEMDAS, right? The order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So what does this mean? Okay, the P is parentheses, right? But really, it's anything in grouping symbols. You got to do those first. That's what that P stands for. And what does E stand for? Okay, that stands for exponents. You're going to do powers next. Anything like this, uh, anything with an exponent is powers. And now, here is where you need to pay extra close attention. So what do we do next? Well, we do multiplication. Always do multiplication, right? And then we always do division. And then we always do addition. Then we'll always do subtraction. So how many people think that is the, uh, this is the correct way um, for the order of operations, the correct you know, uh, way to interpret this little PEMDAS saying? Well, if you're absolutely certain that, yep, that's absolutely correct, well, no, it's not. Okay, so unfortunately, i got to give you a little sad face. Um, you were close, okay, but not exactly. So we need to kind of clarify this now because this is where students get confused. And it can be a little confusing, so don't feel bad if you, uh, you know, got this, you know, uh, didn't understand this completely. All right, so here's the way this really, really works, okay? And this is where this is, it could throw people off in this particular problem. So what we're going to do is multiplication, multiplication or division, okay, here, if we have them, whatever comes first from left to right. So if multiplication comes first and then division, we're going to do multiplication, then division. But if we have division and then multiplication, we got to do division uh, and then multiplication. So we could write this little phrase like P, E, D, M. Okay. And by the way, it's the same thing with addition and subtraction, whatever comes first from left to right. So I could write this like S, A, then the, this would make no sense. And we'd be like, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. So that's why we don't have like multiple different acronyms for the slow PEMDAS, but you need to be able to interpret it correctly. It's whatever we see first from left to right. If we see division, we do division, then multiplication. Over here, if we see subtraction first from left to right, then that's what we do. And that is the, um, the little error that I wanted to highlight here. Okay, so I'm telling you right now, a lot of people, uh, they would just like blindly say, no, it's absolutely multiplication and division. And when you have a uh, problem, where there's both multiplication and division, I'm telling you right now, majority of people would do the multiplication first because they're in their brain. They're like, oh, I got to do the M, and then I'll do the D. Okay, well, that is wrong if you have multiplication and division right next to one another like we have in this problem. Okay, so let's get to the solution. Now here, most people, again, would say, okay, they're going to focus on the numerator. They're going to go right here. Okay, they're like, oh, I got multiplication. I'm following, I'm following the rules. Okay, Pam, P E M, uh, Pam, Dos. I have to <laughs> slow down myself. So they're like, oh, I got the M. I'm just looking here. I'm going to do the multiplication first. That's incorrect, right? Okay, we have to do the division first because we have division, multiplication, whatever comes first from left to right. Division came first. I got to do this. Okay, so I'm going to use little grouping symbols, throw them in. And now, now that we know that, this is just a bunch of number crunching here. So, all right, so here we got uh, two-thirds divided by one-half. Of course, I'm going to turn this into multiplication by flipping this fraction. If you have um, any difficulty with fractions, I have tons of videos in my uh, pre-algebra playlist on my channel 
um, that could help you out with fractions. So if you don't really know what I'm doing here, well, you know, you're going to have to uh, definitely watch more of my videos because order of operations, fractions, this is all basic mathematics, okay? If you're trying to improve in order of operations, then you definitely need to know fractions. So anyways, first things first. So we have two-thirds times the two over one, okay? That's what we're doing here. All right, we're just going to focus on one thing at a time, all right? So when I do this, I get uh, four over three. So that's four-thirds. That's the answer there. Then you can see I have the rest of my problem times one half plus one half over one half. So the best way to approach these problems where there's a lot going on in the numerator and denominator is just focus on simplifying the respective, uh, the numerator first, the denominator uh, separately. In other words, you're going to get this down to one value and get this down to one value if that's the case, you know, if there's more going on down here, and then we'll put it all together at the end. All right, now at this point, this should be pretty straightforward because now clearly I have multiplication and addition. I need to be doing this now, okay? So hopefully, you know, most of you can handle this problem this at this uh, point. So four-thirds times one-half is going to be what? I'm going to multiply across, okay? So that's going to be four times one. That's four. Three times two is six. So this is four-six plus one half, okay, divided by one half. So I'm not done yet. I gotta get I gotta get this fully simplified. So four six plus one half, what can I do there? Well one half is the same thing as uh, three over six, right? So I can multiply this by three and this by three. So I got four six plus three six. Let's go down here. So let's just do this here quick. We had four, six plus one half, which is the same thing as three, six. So when I'm adding fractions, I got the same denominator. So this is going to be seven over six. That's what this whole numerator turned out to be. And then dividing that by one half. Okay, so we're almost there. So now I have, okay, how can I interpret this as a complex fraction? So it's going to be seven, six divided by, that's the division symbol, okay, one half. All right, so that's the same thing as 7, 6 times, I flip this fraction, 2 over 1. Now, I couldn't multiply across, so I get 14 over 6, but we don't want to work harder, we want to work smarter. This 2 can go into that 3, uh, or sorry, that 6 3 times, so I end up with the fraction uh, 7 thirds. And it's just a quick review. Let's just make sure we understand this cross-cancelization business. So 6 is the same thing as 3 times 2. So these are factors. I can cross these guys out, and I'm left with 7 thirds. All right. So if you got this problem all right, um, you know, and knew this, then you're pretty awesome. I must give you a crazy happy face with an A+. Plus. I'm going to give you like four stars, 100%. Um, I'm almost tempted to say, you know what, you don't even have to go to school for the rest of this year. Uh, keep watching that guy on YouTube because you're doing awesome. You all clearly know what you're you know, doing. Just teach yourself. Here's a textbook. Have a nice day. Collect your A plus at the end of the year. However, listen, uh, you, you clearly are paying attention to your teacher. You're probably doing a lot of the right things. Uh, but this problem, you know, we're just dealing with fractions. You know, it gets more complicated if I'm throwing in powers and positive, negative numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this is why math is a process. It's really a stepping stone, okay? You got, you're learning skills, and you're going to have to practice these skills, you know, like you're climbing a mountain, all right? You're not going to just leap. You can't just leap forward in math like, oh, I can do this problem, so I must be a total expert at the order of operations. No, you're pretty good, but you need to still practice a variety, other varieties of problems here just to make sure you understand everything and then, you know, you skip forward and you can't, I mean, you uh, continue to move forward learning other skill sets, but don't think that one problem is all you need to do. So when you're doing your homework problem, if you can do one right, you'd be like, okay, I got this. I'm, I must know everything because I could do this one problem. No, that's not the case. Okay, there's other uh, unique situations. I could throw in all kinds of crazy stuff in here. I could throw in negative values, powers, absolute value. You know, I can, I could really make your life, you know, uncomfortable if I wanted to from a mathematical standpoint. But that's not the, that's not the main idea of this video. The main idea is to uh, really talk about the order of operations, make sure you got that right. But beyond that, it's never a good idea to get overconfident in math because there's always some new challenge right around the corner. Okay, that's why those students who tend to get overconfident start tuning out. They're like, nah, I don't need to pay attention because I know this. I got this. I got this. Well, you don't know what's coming your way. There's always going to be new and exciting math material. 
All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up here. If you like this video in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my uh, YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics, all there uh, for you. Um, and I'm posting new content all the time. My mission, my goal is to try to teach math in a super clear and understandable way so anyone can learn. Okay, nobody should be struggling in math. Okay, if you're having a tough time in math, take a look at your notes, start doing the right thing there, do all your homework, get in communication with your math teacher, be like, hey, I need to improve, get that dynamic going but if you need help above and beyond you know that then there's tons of help that uh, is available these days where you know me back 40 years ago i didn't have these uh you know youtube and all kinds of great stuff like that so find someone something that you can understand get that extra help but you're going to have to go on on the initiative and uh, i would love nothing more to be that person that can um, help you along with your mathematics journey all right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in all your mathematics journeys. Thank you for your time and have a great day.